All right. All right, all right, all right. Shalom. Shalom. Coming at you with another lesson. My name is Yakanan. This is my Tazma. This is Tazma. And uh, first and foremost, we'd like to give all glory and honor to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Rukakadash. And double honors to the elder apostles, the prophets, and the teachers, also the, the disciples, the students at GMS that have been bringing out this 100% truth for the last 30 plus years. Also, to the sincere Akiawa Akwa, salutations. So, um, let's get right into it. We are getting close to the famine of the word. How close are we? You know, let's get a couple of precepts first. Give me Amos 8 and 11. Uh, I'm going to bring it back up again in this class, but I want to start with that right now. This is the book of Amos, chapter 8, verse 11. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, Yahweh, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. So, we're coming to that time right now. I mean, we got wicked teachers, we got wicked um, church leaders, we got wicked camp leaders, everybody worships money. I mean, I, it, this is the perfect time for the Most High to pull in this famine. Be, and I told my wife this morning, I said, you know, we're coming into the famine of the word soon. And once it's all over, I'm going to wish I did more. So think about what you're doing. Think about what you're doing. Let's get one more. I'm going to get one more real quick, and then um, I want to say a few things. So let's go to, um, go to Jeremiah chapter 14 and 12. When they fast, I will not hear their cry. So when you guys decide, like I said, oh man, it's too late, I should have, this and that, man, why didn't I listen to the prophets? Why didn't I listen? Well, so you're gonna, now you're gonna start doing every, just like in with the time of Moses. He, they said, he, the, Yahweh sent them out to seek out the land, right? With, um, with um, Joshua. And they came back with Caleb with a bad report. And Caleb's like, hold on now, let's go take the whole place down. And these guys came back with a bad report. And so the Most High said, no, I don't even go and fight. And they said, no, no, we'll fight, we'll fight. Remember? I forget that. I'm, not, I'm just roughly paraphrasing the story to make the point. They decided when it was too late to go fight, and the Most High destroyed them in that fight. They, he told them, he said, what are you guys going out there for? I told you not to. I'm not, I'm not with you. Now, let me read it again. When they fast, I will not hear their cry. And when they offer burnt offerings and ovulations, I will not accept them, but I will consume them by the sword. And who's that sword? We all know. And by the famine and by the pestilence. When you don't have the word, you're not going to know what to do. This is an instruction book. So we're instructed to teach you guys what this book says. And within the instructions of this book, it tells you how to survive Jacob's troubles. It tells you how to survive the famine of the word. But, okay, let's get into it, though. Uh -huh. I want to um, talk about um, the, um, what's his name, um, Justin Trudeau, because we're coming into that famine, right? What bill, did he, what, what bill is he pushing right now? C-367. And it's purported to amend the criminal code. So they're trying to change the criminal code and it, what they're going to do is they're going to refine the boundaries of free speech. What does it mean to refine? To, to, um, um, to purify. <laughs> they want to make the boundaries a little better, is what they're saying, according to their laws, according to their gods. So they, they're going to refine the boundaries of free speech, criminalizing public Bible readings and other expressions of Christian teachings. I don't see any fucking Christians out here, so you know who they're talking about. We're the only ones reading this Bible. We're the only ones bringing out this truth. Ain't nobody else doing that. Just us. Just us. So when it says that no free reading, that's talking about us, because we're going to tell you the truth. I got kicked out of the church years ago. All I said is, well, in the Old Testament, it says this. They didn't want to deal with me anymore. They knew that I was studying. They knew I was studying. They didn't want my ears to be open. So not only is 
Justin Trudeau, and, and, and when you go into it, they're, oh, most of the people really like this idea of not, do, not being able to pray in public. The media tells you that, but do the people really feel this way? What, we can't pray anymore? We can't have, we, we, we can't pray for each other. We can't say, oh, hey, God bless, brother. Oh, you got to go to prison. That's because there, there's a fine with that. You said God bless. So you see what they're doing? They're, well, you know what? I got a precept for that. I got a precept for that. Um, second Maccabees 6 and 6. God, I had a precept before. Um, this is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 3, verse 15. And this is the land back over to a previously saying about the Lord sending the prophets to teach you what the, uh, how to prepare for uh, uh, Jacob's trouble. Okay? Because this is an instruction manual. All right? This is, a, this is a guide on how to live your life righteously, right? This is a point of reference to go to when you got problems with dealing with your wife. You go to the book of Ecclesiasticus, right? You go to the book of Proverbs, all right? You need to chastise your children. Go to the book of Proverbs and, and what have you, all right? So the knowledge and understanding of the Holy Scriptures is not just given to the average person. It's given to the prophets first. Like the scripture says in the book of Amos, the Lord reveals his secrets to his servants, the prophets, okay, which in turn will teach the elect knowledge, wisdom, and under or the, the understanding of the Holy Scriptures. You know what's good? That's beautiful about that Amos scripture. It says, the Lord will do nothing, but he reveals his secret unto the prophet. Letting you know, like he said, only us. We teach you guys. He puts the spirit on us to teach you guys. Huh. And this is the book of Jeremiah chapter 3 verse 15. And I will give you pastors according to mine heart which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding because you're not going to be able to crack open the Bible yourself and read it and understand it. Okay? You're not. It's impossible. I have done it for years. Okay, the Lord has to put the spirit on you, that spirit of understanding, by way of the Holy Spirit, for you to receive this. Okay, he has to open your mind through Yahweh Shai, the Messiah, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, and then you'll get that understanding. Then you'll learn how to prepare for Jacob's trouble and navigate your way through life righteously. And what do you want me to get, bro? Going back into the C367 bill. Give me a second, back to be six and six. So they have a bill. You know, in California, they've been trying to outlaw the Bible forever. Oh, we want to make the Bible. So once they get it to happen in California, that's a test date. So once they get it to once they get it to pass in a test date, it, it's kind of like um, a domino effect. Other places start to fold all over the nation. So you got to watch out for these test dates when they say that they're doing something new. So, um, 2 Maccabees 6 and 6. Got it on deck. This is the book of 2 Maccabees, chapter 6, verse 6. Neither was it lawful for a man to keep Sabbath days or ancient fasts or to profess himself at all to be a Jew. There is nothing new under the sun. This is the same exact thing they did in the time of the Maccabees. They took away our laws, our statutes, our commandments, and there's a reason why they do this. All the way back then, they knew that if they could keep us from keeping the laws, that Yahweh wouldn't deal with us. Now, this day and age, they're doing the same thing over again. And what are they going to do? They're going to rewrite an AI Bible. And through that AI Bible, they're going to write themselves in as the, uh, the gods and the priests and the prophets. So, 1 Maccabees 3 and 48. And that's exactly what they're doing right now. So, we might as well get it. I even got close to the class. I gotta put, I, I, we got some. We got some precepts. See, I knew you were gonna. Um, you, I knew you were gonna have precepts for this one, though. I knew that there was gonna be a bunch of precepts for this. Ah, uh, this is the book of First Maccabees, chapter one, verse thirty-eight. Insomuch that the inhabitants of Jerusalem fled because of them. Whereupon the city was made. Three and forty-eight. Oh, uh, Khan, I thought you said uh, one and uh, one and thirty. You said three, three and forty-eight. Ah. That's all right. I'm trying to find something.
This is the book of 1 Maccabees, chapter 3, verse 48. And laid open the book of the law, wherein the heathen had sought to paint the likenesses of their images. So there you have it. So what did I just tell you? They're going to take away our laws, they're going to rewrite the Bible, and they're going to implant themselves as the gods. Why do you think, oh, this Bible's no good? Why? Because even the Bible tells you, uh, indeed, indeed, the scriptures tell you that these are the wicked, wicked two-thirds and wicked other nations. The only people that are uh, a part of this truth, the only people, and you can tell who's a part of this truth. First of all, this is so simple. Did I ever ask anybody for a cash app or a set or thanks or a super thanks or a PayPal or or um, a GoFundMe? I don't work for money out here. I work for Yahweh, Baha Shim, Yahweh Shai. I don't need nothing from nobody. That's one dead giveaway. Another dead giveaway is when the MOTB can be an embargo. No, it's the cell phone. No, it's the white woman. It's you. It's yearly. money. It's money. Everything is the MOTB according. So they change it yearly. It's right? sin. That's a dead giveaway that you're not in the truth. Here's another thing. Merchandising. Merchandising is beautiful. This is why we're having a famine of the word soon. When you're selling prayers for $25 and you can give somebody a Hebrew name for $15. How did I get my Hebrew name? I don't remember paying $15. You know how I got my Hebrew name? I looked up my name and I saw that my name had a Hebrew pronunciation. So I said, wow, what does it mean? Oh, Yakanan. He's righteous from the root. I like that, I'll keep it. Look up your first name. Try that for instance. And whatever the spirit is being put on you, if it's not a name that's already been given to you, there's a spirit on you. You'll find that name. How'd you get your name? Uh, to be honest with you, <laughs> I just heard it before and I liked it. There was a spirit on him. When he heard that name, it stuck to him. Mm -hmm. So these are dead giveaways of false prophets. It's that simple. It's that easy to discover who you're dealing with. And like the brother said, you know, it's, it's not the, a red flag should pop up in your face whenever anybody's merchandising the word, right? Merchandising, merchandise. Now, maybe garments, I could understand that. You know, that's fine. I don't mind even paying for that because I've bought, I purchased uh, uh, three or four garments online. That's not a problem. They can't make them for free, right? Although, although there are a lot of brothers and sisters that make them and give them to the prophets for free. And that's, that's cool. And that's recognized by the Heavenly Father. Okay? You'll be blessed for doing that. However, when you're trying to merchandise the scriptures, you're trying to merchandise prayers, Hebrew names, that's wicked. That's wicked to the core. And you Sakari Negroes are going to pay for it. Oh, they... The Lord is going to destroy each and every last one of you bastards for merchandising his word. Let's go to the book of um, Ezekiel, um, yeah, Ezekiel chapter 3. Starting from the top. Man, where is my class? I lost my class there. I lost my notes. I did. This is the book of Ezekiel, chapter 3. 1 through 3, I think. Verse 1. Moreover, he said unto me, Son of man, eat that thou findest. Eat this roll, and go speak unto the house of Israel. So he's telling him to learn the scriptures and go out to the highways and hedges and preach to the wind. The wind are the children of Israel that don't know who they are. Keep going. So I opened my mouth and he caused me to eat that roll. And he said unto me, son of man, cause thy belly to eat and fill thy bowels with this roll that I give thee. Then did I eat it, and it was in my mouth as honey for sweetness. When he heard the word, it was beautiful to him. It was harmonious. Keep going. And he said unto me, Son of man, 
Go, get thee unto the house of Israel and speak with my words unto them. So go to the house of, wait a second. It didn't say all nations? It said to the house of Israel and hey. speak with my words unto them. But what about John 3.16? He so loved the whole world, Craig. He loved the world. It's all about context. And that's so, something that Christians don't understand. Mm, isn't that neat? It said, go speak to the house of Israel. We've been telling you guys from the jump, this is only about Yashar Allah, the prince of a godlike power. That's it. Ain't nobody else. So if you're not an Israelite, it's clear that you're doomed. Keep going. <laughs> doomed. Verse 4, or verse 5. For thou art not sent to a people of a strange speech oh. and of a hard language, heathens. I got I to gotta get this. But question. to the house of Israel. Ooh. Ezekiel chapter 33, NLT. That's a cut right there. That's another cut. Yep, let's read it again. For thou art not sent to a people of a strange speech and of a hard language, but to the house of Israel. So, this is the same verse in the NLT. Then he said, Son of man, go to the people of Israel and give them my message. I am not sending you to a foreign people whose language you cannot understand. No, I am not sending you to a people with a strange and difficult speech. If I did... If I did, they would listen. That's horrible. That's God. horrible. God. Keep going. And it just speaks to the stiff neck of Israelites, even today. Okay? Because wicked two-third Israelites can't receive this. They don't want to hear it. And when you do talk to them about the Holy Scriptures, they want you to speak to them smooth things. I got that right? precept. Let me get it. I, I literally got that precept on deck. Let's get it. Um, uh, um, um, I, it was literally the um, next precept that was I was about to bring out. Go back. Go back. That's the spirit. That's the spirit. Isaiah chapter thirty, KJV. And we're gonna go down. To, we're gonna start at verse nine. This is a rebellious people, lying children, children that will not hear the law of the Lord, which say to the seers, "See not." And to the prophets, prophesy not unto us right things, speak unto us smooth things. Prophesy deceits. You call it, you can break it down. So like the brother was saying, they want to say to the seers, see not. Well, don't tell us what the prophecies actually mean, because that means we're going to have to give up something. We're going to have to give up our liberties, right? We don't want to hear about the end of the world coming. We don't want to hear about the coming of the Messiah. We don't want to hear about having to repent in order to be saved, right? Because we're so used to Babylon the Great, all the little luxuries here, and you're, you're able to sin and do whatever you want to do. Do as thou wilt after our father Esau, right? I mean, we know prophecy is, is ultimately going to unfold, but we don't want to hear it right now. So please, don't prophesy us uh, 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 the truth prophesy deceits, falsities. Make Lies. some shit up. Lies, Lies, please. Okay? Don't tell us the truth. Don't tell us that the Lord's coming to destroy <laughs> us. He go, he's going to destroy the, the two-thirds. Tell us what the Christians tell us. Tell us that the Lord is going to save us regardless. Right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Let's keep going back to Ezekiel chapter 3. I'm going to keep it in the NLT though that way. Um, the NLT on this chapter it just destroys everybody. Yeah, it sure does. It really does. So, Ezekiel chapter 3, NLT. Boom. We're good. Alright, um, pick up where we left off of the verse 7. Verse 7. It's the book of Ezekiel chapter 3, verse 7. But the house of Israel will not hearken unto thee. For they will not hearken unto me, for all the house of Israel are impudent and hard-hearted. Im impudent. Wait, imputed, strong, firm, hard, or and hard-hearted, stubborn, stiff-necked. So you're 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 
You're a hard head, stubborn ass. What is a what's a what's a hard head mate? A soft ass. Soft ass. And what that means when you're a child is if you don't listen to your parents, they're gonna beat you down. Mm -hmm. So guess what? We call him the father for a reason. And he getting ready to beat two thirds of you all the way to dust. Some serious judgment's about to come. So what did you just read? Seven, right? Come. This is seven in the NLT. But the people of Israel will not listen to you any more than they will listen to me. For the whole lot of them are hard-hearted and stubborn. But, uh, you know what? Go ahead. Get, get um, back to the KJV. Come. This is the, ver uh, this is the book of Ezekiel, chapter 3, verse 8. Behold, I have made thy face strong against their faces and thy forehead strong against their foreheads. Keep going. As an adamant parter, then flint, have I made thy forehead, fear them not. Neither be dismayed at their looks, though they be a rebellious house. So, <laughs> but look, I've made you as abstinent and hard-hearted as they are. In other words, you ever see somebody go up against the prophets and they get real rough and they get real cruel. They go straight to 2 Corinthians 11 and 6. I may be rude and speak, but not knowledge. So when, when they start getting hard against you, he made us just as hard. When they come up with those hard, with, with those tricky statements and um, the slithery questions to try and trap you up, the most high put you one step ahead of them. That's what he's trying to tell you right now. We're one step ahead of you every time. And it's not because we're badass dudes. It's because he's protecting us because we're doing his work. Sincerely. With, with, with joyfulness and gladness of heart. Let's keep going. Uh -huh. Verse 10. Moreover, he said unto me, Son of man, all my words that I shall speak unto thee. Receive in thine heart and hear with thine ears. So he said, and then he added. So he's adding on to what he said. Son of man, let my word sink deep into your heart first. Wait a second. Let's break that down just a little bit further. Son of man, study this word. Know it so well like you would know the back of your own hand. Know the words that you're saying. Don't just decide that you understand something. Look it up. Make sure that you're coming at these um, humble-spirited Israelites with the 100% truth. Or if we can go to Ezekiel chapter 33 and I can show you that your blood, their blood will be on your hands when you start telling them false truth, which means lies. So, so son of man, he added, let my words sink deep into your heart first. Listen to them carefully for yourself. Understand this shit, man. Come on. Then go to your people in exile and say to them, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Do this whether they listen to you or not. So, and it says, you will be hated for his namesake. And we just told you, these people don't tell us right things, tell us smooth things. So whether they listen or not, whether they and read it, read that, read that verse in the KJV, um, verse eleven. In the KJV. This is the book of Ezekiel, chapter three, verse eleven. And go, get thee to them of the captivity unto the children of thy people, and speak unto them and tell them, Thus saith the Lord Yahweh, whether they hear, they will hear or whether they will forbear. Boom, that's what I wanted right there, forbear. To forbear means to fall away from. Oh, they hear it. Just like when you go into uh, Mark chapter four, starting at verse, I think 15 or 16, they hear the word, they accept it with joyful and glass. When oppression sinks in or anything bad happens, they're, they're, um, they're offended. So, so they fall away for they forbear the word. They're, oh man, I can't do that. And then they start falling away slowly. Forbearer, a forbearer. That person completely rejects the truth. So these words, just like I was telling you, just told you, read it slow, understand it. So when he tells you whether they will hear or forbear, 
That means whether they hear it or whether they reject it. And if they hear it, that means receive. All right, let's keep going. Uh, this is the book of uh, Ezekiel chapter 3, verse 12. Or ch chapter 3, verse 12. Then the Spirit took me up, and I heard behind me a voice of a great rushing, saying, Blessed be the Lord of the Lord. Blessed be the glory of the Lord from his place. Zalachia. Keep going. I heard also the noise of the wings of the living creatures that touched one another, and the noise of the wheels over against them, and a noise of a great rushing. So he could hear the chariots. Yeah, I mean, that's what I'm, I'm hearing the chariots right now in this description. Yeah. Keep going, 14. So the spirit lifted me up and took me away. Wait a second. How did, how did, um, how did uh, Elijah leave? By way of the chariots. The spirit took him up in a whirlwind. And so this is saying in Ezekiel, in, in his vision, the spirit took him up the same way. The spirit took him up, keep going. And took me away and I went in bitterness in the heat of my spirit. But the hand of the Lord was strong upon me. And so the spirit lifted me up and took me away. I was angry. I was like, I was torn apart. I was confounded. But the Lord's hold on me was strong. Keep going. So then I I, I'm sorry, I, I want to break down that strong. The Lord's hold on me was strong. In other words, he, he kept his spirit on me. So I stayed in that faith. Because, see, you can't have faith without that strong spirit on you. Keep going. Then I came to them of the captivity at Tel, Tel Abib mm. that dwelt by the river of Chebar. And I sat where they sat and remained there astonished among them seven days. Seven is a number of completion. How many days are in a week? Seven. What's the day of rest? The seventh day. When he killed the men, he said, I killed 7,000 men. It wasn't exactly 7,000 on, on the seven days. That's an exact. But when he's talking about they killed 7,000 of their men, he's saying, in the, uh, um, he's saying he completely demolished their army. Seven is the number of completion. Now, you go into um, a, a, a Christian Edomite breakdown, guess what? Nine. Nine is the number of completion. I'm like, you turn that upside down and it works for me because that's exactly what you are. Mm -hmm. nine. An upside down nine. But um, he was overwhelmed and he sat among them for seven days days. Why? Because he did everything. He read the book. He learned it. And now he's astonished by the people. Okay, so this is a watchman for Israel. Go to verse 16. Verse 16. And it came to pass at the end of seven days that the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore, hear the word of my mouth and give them warning from me. So he says, whenever you receive a message from me, you give it to the people immediately. Keep going. When I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die, and thou givest him not warning, nor speakest to warn the wicked from his wicked way to save his life, the same wicked man shall die in his iniquity. So, but his blood mm -hmm. will I require at thine hand. So, so, um... It's telling you, if, if you warn the wicked under the penalty of death, but you fail to deliver him through this warning, the blood of the wicked has been removed from your hands, but he still has to, um, he still has to pay his judgment. He has to pay his recompense because he, he forbeared you. He, he was a forbearer of the word that you spoke to him. He, he rejected it. Okay, keep going. Verse 18, when I say unto the wicked. No, 19. Con, Yet if thou warn the wicked, and he turn not from his wickedness, nor from his wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity. But I'm thou sorry. hast delivered thy soul. So, um, if you warn him, like I said, and they refuse to repent, therefore, Pharaoh, they reject the truth. 
They die in their sins. But you will have saved yourself because you obeyed Yahweh. That simple. Now, it's getting close. Keep going. Again, when a righteous man doth turn from his righteousness and commit iniquity, and I lay a stumbling block before him, he shall die. Because thou hast not given him warning, he shall die in his sin, and his righteousness, which he hath done, shall not be remembered. Mm. But his blood will I require at thine hand. So, if righteous people turn away from their righteous behavior and ignore the obstacles I put in their way, they will die. Notice that. He said obstacles. Isn't that neat that we're always dealing with something? That takes you right to Second um, 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 Sirach chapter 2 and verse 5. Gold is refined in the fire and acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. That furnace of adversity is the obstacles this is talking about. So, uh, so if you um, ignore the obstacles I put in their way, they will die. You're, you're no longer gold, you're dross. The word dross means trash. So you are now considered trash and what do you do with fire? Well, I mean, when you put garbage in fire, it just burns right up. Gold, when you put gold in fire, it's beautiful. See, it starts to um, melt and all of this smoke and all this stuff, all these impurities just fly right off of it. And when you're a gold refiner, the way you can tell that that gold has been refined after you've put it through um, a refinery, you can see your reflection in it. So Yahweh will be able to see you reflecting his words after he's refined you. That's what Ezekiel's talking about. And so if you hear the word and you reject it, you... You're dross. Like I said, you're just going to burn in the fire. There is no gold in you. That's why it says many are called, but few are chosen. A lot of you guys are called just to be a part of the fire. Keep going. Verse 20, 21. Nevertheless, if thou warn the righteous man, that the righteous sin not, and he doth not sin, he shall surely live, because he is warned. Also, thou hast delivered thy soul. So if you warn righteous people not to sin and they listen to you sincerely with joyfulness and gladness of heart, we're not talking about you fools, you stupid motherfuckers that just go through the motions. Oh, you know, I, yeah, I, I don't want to hear none of that. I don't believe in that. I'm sorry, I just don't. Uh, I believe in studies. I believe in works. I believe in... The way you live your life should be righteous, sincere, and true. So when I take this garment off and I go home, I'm not going to change into a different person for the week. I'm going to stay the same. I'm going to resonate. I'm going to um, uh, meditate oh. in the Word. I'm going to continually study. Now, lately, I haven't been bringing out classes, but I'm new. I've only been out here two years. i got to sit down and listen to the elders every now and then and go back to square one. Now, the last couple weeks, I've been out of town with no reception. And then, well, two weeks ago, last week, as soon as I got back, I wanted to do a class. My throat hurt so bad, I went home and went to bed. And I still had to work. I'm a single income family. I can't be sick. So I still, as sick as I was, all I could do was go work my 16 hour days and come home and sleep. But guess what? I woke up this morning, I felt great. I was like, I almost like exploded right out of the bed. And I put up a class this morning, and we're doing a class now. So the Most High put that spirit, that strong spirit back on me. And he said, okay, now go back out. I needed you to sit down for a minute. You ever watch people play in a game? You got the star player out there. Now, I'm not the star player, but you'll have the star player out there, and they'll pull him out of the game. Say, hey, come take a rest for a minute. They might even tell him something off to the side to help him. That's what I was looking for. I wanted to see why he was stopping me, so I had to get my pencil and my paper, and I started listening to all the prophets. And what it did was, it, it, it brought me back to the basics. It brought me back into that spirit. So when they spoke to me, I listened. And so now my soul is saved, and so are the prophets that saved me by telling me the truth. Uh, uh. Let's keep going. Um, where were we at? Verse 22. And the hand of the Lord was there upon me. And he said unto me, Arise, go forth into the plain, and I will there talk with thee. 
So he's, he's literally telling him, go to a certain place and I'm going to send you more um, prophecies. And what did it say way up here? It said, when I speak to you, what are you supposed to do? Immediately tell the people. So he's saying, go over here, be at this time. So what you should be doing is trying to figure out how can I get there to be on time? That's the only thing that should be on his mind at this point when he said, I'm going to meet you at this place and send more, more information into your mind. Keep going. Then I arose, verse 23, then I arose and went forth into the plain, and behold, the glory of the Lord stood there, as the glory which I saw by the river of Tebar, and I fell on my face. He saw Yahweh. He saw the glory of Yahweh standing there, and he fell down on his face to worship him. He didn't, he felt, you know what? This is something that I don't think that you proud motherfuckers don't understand, because the power of Yahweh is so strong that if you were to be in his presence, you wouldn't be standing there all smug and big, what's up, wrapping your head back and forth, holding your hand on your, like this is your stance? Hell no, you ain't gonna act like that. You're gonna fall down on your face and wish you were covered by dust. Please just cover me so he can't see me. Please don't make eye contact. I'm afraid I'm going to die if you do. Mm -hmm. You guys don't understand what kind of power you're dealing with. You guys out here making jokes. Well, God is all love. God isn't a person. He's a spirit. God is this. God is whatever you make them. Well, right here it said, I saw the glory of the Lord. And when I saw the glory of the Lord, I fell on my face. Keep going. Look at Ezekiel chapter 3, verse 23. Then I arose and went forth. Into the plain, Salakia, verse 24. Then the Spirit entered into me and set me upon my feet and spake with me and said unto me, Go, shut thyself within thine house. He said, The Spirit came into him, told him, Get up, get up. And, and he spoke to me and said, Go to your house and shut yourself in. So go back to your people, go back to your home. Shut the doors. Lock it. Go ahead. But thou, verse 25, but thou, O son of man, behold, they shall put bands upon thee and shall bind thee with them, and thou shalt not go out among them. So give me Amos 8 and 11. Be I'll, 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 8 and 11. There, son of man, you will be tied with the ropes so you cannot go out among the people. This is the book of Amos, chapter 8, verse 11. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, Yahweh, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. So there's going to be a time where he's going to shut the mouths of the real prophets and you guys are going to have to deal with these end times yourself. Now, mostly 99, I, I, I have to say two-thirds of the Israelites aren't going to listen to us. I, honestly, um, in two, two years, I'm going on three years being out here, I've seen maybe maybe two, three righteous people. And, and uh, honestly, the two out of the three were women. So I have seen no men of Israel that come out here. Now, I'm not talking about the brothers that are already in the camps. I'm talking about people that don't know who they are, and they hear this word, and they're like, oh, dang. Oh, dang. You know, and I'm hoping that seed actually grows. So in verse 26, I'm just going to go ahead and read it. I will make your tongue stick to the roof of your mouth so that you will be speechless and unable to rebuke them, for they are rebels. So he's going to shut our mouths so we can't help you no more. There's going to be a famine of the word. That's going to bring in Jacob's trouble. And that's going to bring in the MOTB right on top of it. That is going to be Jacob's trouble. But the MOTB is a white woman. It's already here. You're the MOTB. No, wait. America's the MOTB. No, wait, wait, no, wait. Sin. It's a cell phone. No, sin is. Sin. No, sin. it's oil. It's money. No, it's gold. It's an embargo. No, cell phones. It's something. No, it's a Dodge Hellcat. You know what it is? It's a subdermal implant of a um, um, a subdermal implant of a foreign object placed beneath the skin. That's what caragua means. So when when you get into it, all of this that we're talking about here today, everything 
has to do with one thing. The children of Israel going back into the kingdom. And like I said, once we're not out here anymore, and once you guys don't have an opportunity to um, hear the word, and you're going to wonder what to do when you run to and fro, and you're going to be looking for that word, and you're not going to be able to find it, you're going to be like, man, I wish I would have listened. Uh, land back on the... Uh, I'm, I'm, to, to land back on the brothers uh, of the previous precept, Amos 8 and 11, this is uh, the book of Isaiah, chapter 8, verse 16. Bind up the testimony, seal the law among my disciples. And that's exactly what's going to happen. That testimony is going to be bound amongst the disciples, amongst the prophets of the Lord. And guess what? Like the scripture says, then shall it be known who are my chosen. See, that's going to be on your mind, you know, at the beginning of Jacob's trouble. When all hell starting to break loose, then you're going to start thinking. Because you're going to have plenty of time to reflect on all your wickedness, all mm. your ignorance, right? All your procrastinating, all right? Your, your tarrying is what I was trying to think of. It says, make no tarry to turn to the Lord, right? When you had liberty... Freedom. Okay, and, I'm, and I'm, I'm, I'm grabbing multiple precepts here at the same time because it communicates the same point. It conveys the same point. When you had liberty, you had freedom, right? To come to the Lord, repent, start following his law, statutes, and commandments. Learn these scriptures because the knowledge and the wisdom and understanding is going to preserve you in Jacob's trouble. Like the scripture says, it's going to be the stability of thy time. When you had liberty, when you had the time to learn this, all right, in order to build yourself up, build your faith up, rather, you were out there dilly-dallying around. Oh, I got till next week. I got till 10 years from now. You know, I got to get my bag, right? I got to chase this tail. But guess what? In the meantime, the Heavenly Father was saying, well, okay, all right, well, Jacob's trouble is happening next week or next year. All right, you trying to you trying to get your bag for five years from now, right? <laughs> I got that I got that four hundred one k building up right now. And in two weeks, you know, we're gonna do this. In three months, we're gonna do that. Next year, though, we'll take that big vacation after we sell this and that. You got all these fucking plans, but you never planned once on bringing out a class. You never considered that. Hey, we're at the cusp of the end of time or at Jacob's trouble, mm. right? We're at the cusp, but we're at the beginning. The beginning stages of all hell breaking loose, right? And if you're not prepared, you're going to be destroyed. That's the bottom line. Let's get that last verse, um, 27. Uh, Ezekiel? Yeah. Ezekiel 3 and 27. I know they are. This is the book of Ezekiel, chapter 3, verse 27. But when I speak with thee, I will open thy mouth, and thou shalt say unto them, Thus saith the Lord, Jehovah, He that heareth, let him hear, and he that forbeareth, let him forbear. So For they are a rebellious house. Woo! So let's, let's get that. But when I give you a message, I'm going to loosen your tongue and let you speak. And what did he say? When I send you a message, you tell the people immediately. Okay? So he said, I'm going to let you speak. But only when I say, then will you say to them, this is what Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai says. Those who choose to listen, those that receive. If you got ears to hear, if you got eyes to see, I say it in every single class this is what i'm talking about when i say that if you've got those if you've got the um ears to hear those who choose to listen will listen but those who refuse will refuse for they are rebels in, in other words there are rebellious people that takes us back to uh, isaiah um 30, 9, 10, 9 and 10. It takes us over to Mark chapter 4, I think, starting at like verse 15 when it gets into the people having the word. Not only you receive the word with joyfulness and gladness of heart, and then you have just a little oppression come in and then you reject the word. Or you, you, you hear the word, but then 
um, money and other things come in and choke the word out of you, the worldly stuff. So what the point is, is that you're a rebellious people. We're only going to be here for a short amount of time. Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Waha, Rafa, Kadash. He's coming back. And he's coming back for the one third. If you're not part of it, you're doomed. You're just doomed. See, we're not going to be, like I keep saying, we're not going to be here any longer. We're going to be gone soon. And I pray, I pray every night that this, this maybe tomorrow, maybe the next day. I know it's not going to happen that soon. God, I'm, I'm right there with you, brother. They're pushing those laws, though. We went out of here. We went out of here yesterday. We do. No, I mean, it's just it's the, the, the amount of just iniquity, the rebellion of our people, and, the, and being under the, the thumb of these damn heathens, huh. it, it's, it's just vexing. It's just a perpetual state of vexation. You know, I try not to, 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 to stay in that mindset, you know what I mean? Yes. But it is vexing. It's you know? disturbing. It's troubling. That's what vexing means. So he's disturbed. He's troubled by the situations we get put in on a daily basis. Now, other people are, uh, did you see what Kanaf Kan Kan from Pope did? He decided, oh, I quit. Well, he that taketh his hands off the plow is and look back is not worthy of the kingdom of heaven. So you let everybody know. I bet you anything, I, I almost want to guarantee it. He's listening to the prophets. And the Most High woke up his spirit and said, why do you keep lying to these people? And he got a real dose of, you ever um, have that moment of clarity and you get like almost a cold sweat over you? Like, oh shit, I forgot to turn off the iron. Yeah. Oh no, I forgot to close my garage door and there was all those weird people by my house. Oh God, oh, a cold sweat, You're like rushing to get back. So that's, what's hap that's what happened to Kanaf, I think. He had that cold sweat come over him. Oh shit, I'm teaching lies and the Most High just told me he sees me. I quit too. No, I didn't. I wouldn't nah. quit bringing out the word. I would quit lying yeah, and start bringing do. out the truth. I would repent. Thank you. I would admit wrongdoing front, uh, uh, amongst the uh, the church, a or congregation, amid the church, the congregation, and say, "Hey, I was wrong. I did this. I was wicked. Please forgive me." And guess what? We're naturally, inherently forgiving, especially those of us in the truth. And we have compassion. We're forgiving people. We we have compassion. Hey, all right. Hey, you know, you fell out. Righteous man falls down seven times. Get up, brush yourself off. Don't do it again. All right? You worship the Lord truth and sincerity and move forward. Keep it moving. All right? Let's help wake up the elect. Come on. Let's, let's, keep it, let's get this going. You know what I'm saying? That's it. Yeah. That's it. And that's all I had on that. Come. So if you got anything else? I don't have anything, brother. Well, with that being said, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to... Yahweh, Ba'ashim, Yahushai, Ba'ashim, Rukwakadash, and double honors to the elder apostles, the prophets, and the teachers, also those students at GMS that have been bringing out this truth for the last 30 plus years. Salutations. Also, if you got eyes to see, if you got ears to hear the truth when it's coming out, and you can receive it, this message is for you. Shalom. Shalom. Ba'ababal.